let's put a pin in Niners in Niners Eagles for a bit. I do want to talk about the standings uh, coming up, but let's get to the Kings win over the defending champion Denver Nuggets. The Kings fell behind early. They battled back with a huge second quarter and held on for a <clears throat> for a 123-117 victory over Denver. James, let's get to your six quick thoughts from the game and kind of roll through um what what you took away from from a a good win. I'm not gonna say their best win of the season, but a but a very good win. Yeah, I don't think it was their best win of the season, but it was a really good win. Yeah. Uh number one, stuff the stat sheet. Uh De'Aaron Fox didn't break out for 40 point night, but he was at impactful in other ways. Uh he notched his second double double of the season, posting 26 points and a career high 16 assists. He was absolutely electric, man. His steal late in the game. And then he stepped into a three. Mm -hmm. The confidence he showed in himself right there was stunning. Mm -hmm. Like that was such a huge play in that game. And uh, the what we're seeing him build, how he's becoming more and more and more, is just wild to me. And I'm going to point out one other thing before mm -hmm. we jump. Before you, you jump in here, he had one turnover in this game. Unbelievable on the season. He has four games where he has either zero or one turnovers. He's got another like five games where he's got two turnovers. He's got another four games where he's got three. And he only has one game this season where he's above three turnovers with four. He's averaging less than two turnovers per game. I've never seen a guy elevate his game and become a superstar like this while reducing his turnovers. Mm -hmm. The top scorers in the league, Luka Doncic and Joel Embiid and... Kevin Durant, those are the three guys ahead of him. All of them average three and a half, 3.8 turnovers mm -hmm. per game. De'Aaron Fox is like 1.9. It's crazy. It's really, really hard to be as high usage as De'Aaron Fox is and as careful with the basketball as he is. And the most impressive part about it is not just the high usage. It's not, oh, he has the ball in his hands a lot. And so it is the fact that there are so many opportunities when you're, Dishing out what? How many? How many assists per game is he at? Eight? Um, a, as of right now, he's at six point six. Six point. Okay, so about seven. When you're dishing out seven assists per game, and you're driving to the basket, and you're kicking the ball out, and you're doing all the all the things he's. There are so many opportunities. Getting in the lane as often as he does, offensive foul. That's a turnover. Being able to avoid the contact there, it, he's just man. Every time, offensively, defensively, um, him running the point as a true point guard, him scoring the ball, him playing off the ball, whatever they need from him on a given night, that's what they're getting. And again, I feel like I say, it, this is a testament to this. I feel like this is something that we talk about every game. So I guess that's superstar stuff, man. It is, man. His usage is at 32.2 on the season. It's insane. His assist rate is 32.1. His turnover rate is 7.3. Like his rookie season, 16.4. His second season, 15. Last season, 10.6. To shave 3.3% off your turnover percentage? It's insane. It's absolutely bananas. Yeah, he's playing so incredibly well. <laughs> you, you talk about the turnover rate. That's a... Turnover percentage is estimate of turnovers per 100 plays. <laughs> of the players with usage percentages higher than him, Nikola Jokic has a higher... So these usage rates higher, these are their turnover rates. 11.3 for Nikola Jokic. LaMelo Ball, 15.3. Devin Booker, 11.3. Kevin Durant, 12.7. Giannis, 15.1. Luka Doncic, 13.1. Joel Embiid, 12.5. And, and then there's De'Aaron, 7.3. 7.3. That is mind-boggling. For a dude who's averaging 30.3 a game, that's it is absolutely mind-boggling. Six nutty. points. Yeah. Like look at his stats. Look at Russell Westbrook's stats. Look, track them year by year. Mm -hmm. And you can project where he's going to be. I don't think he's ever going to be the 10 rebounds per game guy, but that's because he has Sabonis and and he respects that Sabonis is going to go get the rebound. Um but he outside of that, like the the production level is mm -hmm. right there. It's right there in line with what uh, Westbrook was. And uh, I'll say this all the De'Aaron Fox is a much better defender. Yeah. Look at yeah, that. I, I, it, I bamboozled six quick thoughts. Nice job. No, you're fine. Um, 
we have i mean we got we got time we're good all right the sidebar real quick on the russell westbrook thing because i'm a russell westbrook guy now so i have to come to his defense uh <laughs> yeah no i'm joking i'm joking I, I i always just the russell westbrook defense thing and again this is unrelated to anything that you just said i always wonder what he would have looked like defensively if he didn't gamble for steals as often as he did. He spent, so, he got blown by so many times. He was jumping for steals, reaching for steals. I, I, I do wonder because a guy that athletic and, and at his size, you would feel like, yeah, man, he, he, sh he should have been a pretty good defender. But anyways, that's separate. Yeah. Darren Fox, better defender than Russell Westbrook. You are correct. Uh, number two. Uh, number two, heat check. Um, Malik Monk brought energy from the moment he stepped on the court, knocked him down a couple of early threes. Uh, he ran the second unit to perfection. 26 points, mm. four assists. Him and Malik Monk, um, him and De'Aaron Fox are playing together a lot this season, mm -hmm. which Mike Brown did not do last year. It is such a an impossible thing for opposing defenses to stop two of these dudes. When they're both on the court together and you don't know who's going to be attacking and how they're going to do it, and they both attack in different ways, it just makes the Kings nearly unstoppable for those five or six minutes they're on the court. Mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't matter who's out there with them. Yeah. Put shooters out there, put a big yeah. man out there. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Just let them, let them run. Finding that go-to lineup in five minutes left in a playoff game. It's tied. Mm -hmm. What five guys do you trust? Like that is what for me with Mike Brown, that's what this season is about. This entire season the 82 games is about finding out, okay, hey, in a game seven of a playoff series, it's tied and there's five minutes left. Who's closing this game? Who are your five guys? And right now, I think you have to start with Fox and Monk. Fox and Monk. Backcourt. And then and uh, people might sh like think I'm crazy. Kevin Herter in these situations has been tremendous. Mm -hmm. Tremendous. Mm -hmm. Trey Lyles has been tremendous. Mm -hmm. Like you're starting to see, I'm building out a lineup that does not include... Harrison Barnes and does not, it might not even include Demonis Sabonis on some nights wow. or Keegan Murray. Yeah. It's yeah. gotta go. That that's something that you can go match up based with it. Yeah. And that's going to be fascinating to watch as the season unfolds. And then as the postseason unfolds, number three, uh, Sabonis versus Jokic. Hmm. Uh, it should be one of the best, uh, watches in the league. It was. Sabonis got off to a slow start, but he finished with 17 points, 15 rebounds, seven assists. Jokic is unstoppable. 36 points, 12 rebounds, and 12. Actually, he had uh 14 and 13. Um, those are the one stats that I, I messed up in the in the six quick thoughts. And it's because that guy accumulates rebounds and assists so quickly that there is no way to keep track of them. It is it's unbelievable. Isn't it wild to watch him? He just he he's he's one of those athletes that I know. Like I get I get it with Nikola Jokic. I know it. I watch it. I've seen it in the playoffs. I've seen it in the regular season. Yet every time I watch him, I'm still like slack jawed. Yeah, just the greatness that is him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I know, yeah. I know people are probably tired of hearing it because, we, again, everybody knows there's nobody out there going, you know who sucks? Nikola Jokic. Nobody <laughs> believes that. Right. You're He's confused by him. How time, he does it. Two time MVP. Oh, yeah. Runner up last year. A, a NBA champion. Should have been a three time should MVP. Have, probably going to win it this year because he gets a makeup one for last year now that he has a ring. Like, I, it, he, all the accolades, like, yeah, everybody knows. And yeah. yet, still, every time it's like, God, what a, I asked, what a marvel. I asked Domas in the locker room. I said, hey, I know you've watched a lot of footage. That's not a name drop. You're doing your job. I'm sorry. Yeah. Keep going. You, I said, you've watched a lot of footage of your dad. Uh -huh. I said, it, does Jokic remind oh, you of your, of your dad? And he said, yeah, they're different, but there are a lot of similarities. Like a passing big, mm -hmm. they can do what he can do. He's like, I get it. I get the comparison, especially, you know, when we got to see uh, Arvidas in, in the, at the, pro, at the NBA mm -hmm. level. His knees were gone. And he, you know? yeah, he came in late. Yeah, yeah. But it was still like this immense man doing these things that you had never seen before. Right. Yeah, just wild to watch. Yeah, pretty unbelievable. We got to bust through these, don't we? Yeah, we got we got three to go. Uh, uh, number four. Welcome back. After missing four straight games, the low back issue, Keegan Murray returned to the court. It was a rough go. Mike Brown pulled him. And mm. then not only did he pull him after like a minute and a half because he passed on a couple of shots, but he pulled him aside and he had a really long conversation with him and trying to boost his spirits and saying, Hey, no, that's you need to shoot. He responded really well in the second half, uh, dropping in eight points in the third quarter. 
um, yeah, good, good bounce back. Yeah. If he's not, I mean, that's the biggest thing with him, right? It's like, if he's not going to put the ball up, the, the, the entire Kings operation long-term is in jeopardy. It changes. Like that's, yeah. that's what that's again, in the microcosm of this game, was Keegan Murray shooting it or not shooting it going to be the difference between a winner or a loss? And probably not. But over the scope of the next five years, yeah, like that's a dude who you need to see develop, and he's not going to do that if he's hanging out passing up shots. No, I totally agree. Yeah, yeah there has to come a point where his accountability level for himself mm -hmm. starts to take over, yeah. where you're not having to prod him mm -hmm. the whole time. And good, on, he feels it. Yeah, and good on, and good on Mike Brown for pulling him. And not just saying, yeah, let him play through it. Just Stood next like, to him, no, no. standing courtside for like three minutes having a conversation with him. I asked Mike about it after the game. And he's like, yeah, I'm not going to get into all of it. But yeah, we're just trying to say, hey, look, man, you got to shoot it. And we, we need you out there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, good yeah. stuff. Number five. Uh, number five, the other guys. Great Harrison, movie. Yeah, there it is. Uh, the Wooden Gun. Uh, <laughs> Harrison Barnes and Kevin uh, Herter both had solid games. Uh, HB scored 11 points and five and nine from the field. He did brick a late rebound and put back, which was crazy because I was watching the replay just a minute ago. Um, but then you had Kevin Herter, 16 points, six rebounds, four, six from deep. Uh, he had the big dagger, the dagger late in the game that ended it mm. and two huge rebounds down the stretch, just tremendous rebounds. So a uh, big game for Kevin Herter. Herter. I want to put a pin in number five because I want to tie it to something else that we will talk about next segment. So put a pin in number five, go to number six. Um, okay, number six. Still got it. JaVale McGee. That's number six. Yeah. Okay. JaVale, man. He's been all, all, all over the board this season, but he matched up well against DeAndre Jordan and made a huge impact. He ran the floor, attacked the rim, finished with eight points, four rebounds, and three blocks. He was a plus 14. In 12 minutes, his first stint, he was a plus 20. And I thought he was tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. So it was good, awesome. Good for JaVale. Like short burst and, and do what you do well. Don't do the other things. Just yeah. do what you do well. Like yeah. stay within yourself. I don't need to see threes. I don't need to see you handling the ball. I don't need to see you trying to throw a bounce pass. I don't a need a dribble handoff baseline. Game. Yeah. <laughs> do what you do well. Get in the pick and roll. And do what DeAndre Jordan does. Just yes. do the pick and roll to death. Mm -hmm. Yep. And hang out near the rim. Affect some shots. If you can get some blocks. Great. You love that. Stay out of foul trouble. And for God's sakes. JaVale. Two hands. When he gets the rebound. Go two hands. And then keep it high. Like wait until you can clear out. And then bring it down. Golly, 16 years in. He the amount of times <laughs> he brings the ball down after a rebound to get it knocked away by someone a foot or a foot and a half shorter than him, which foot and a half is crazy, uh, six inches to a foot shorter than him is uh, mind-blowing. I watched Jason Thompson do it for eight straight years. <laughs> My gosh. Don't bring the ball down. Keep it high. Wait to clear, and then you can. That in. Don't put the ball. You don't need to gather dribble. Just go back up and dunk the ball. Yeah. Don't do it. Hey, <laughs> I love JaVale so much. The rebound and then the putback where he's falling away when he doesn't need to be. Oh, yeah. Is unbelievable. Or the Chris go Paul. The rim, my guy. Chris Paul stripped him and then he still went up for the layup even though he didn't have the ball. Yeah. It just. God, I love him. No, but when he when he when he stays within that catch lobs, block shots. Grab rebounds. Grab rebounds. There's a very small. Don't don't do the tip out rebound thing. That's never worked at all. Like, and it's a nightmare for Kings fans who remember 2002. Uh, like, just don't do it. Don't don't try to bat the ball out. Just grab the rebound and hold on to it. Yeah. Grab it. Don't even put it on the floor. Just grab it. Hold on to it. Wait for a guard to come take it from you. That's it. Javale McGee, by the way, Jiffy Lube fast break player of the game. That's right. ESPN1320.com. The Jiffy Lube contest page is right there in front of your face when you go to that website. Enter the code word JAVALE, J-A-V-A-L-E, and you will be entered to win a $100 Jiffy Lube gift certificate, courtesy of Jiffy Lube. JAVALE. The JaVale. password is JAVALE.